Simon and Martina from South Korea ask, Can you tell me about non-Korean food in Korea? I just really wanted to talk about this topic because there are a lot of really interesting things mm. about non-Korean food here. Pretty much every day we eat Korean food, but every once in a while you get a hankering for a different flavor. But you will find a lot of the food that's outside of Korea becomes Koreanized and made more for Korean palates. And we're gonna tell you some of the things that you should be wary of if you want to have some non-Korean food here. Now, one thing I want to mention is that it's not that this food isn't delicious. Mm -hmm. It's just that when you think to yourself, I want to taste, let's say, pizza, and then you have mm. Korean pizza, mm. you're kind of like, whoa, this isn't pizza. It technically is pizza, yeah. it's Korean pizza. And sometimes you get a hankering for Korean versions of pizza, but mm -hmm. other times you want some non-Korean pizza. So we're here to talk about those differences that you might experience. I think we should start with number one. Mexican food. I always get hankerings for Mexican food. I think it's one of the most difficult things to recreate in Korea because there aren't a lot of limes. Cilantro is not big. Sour cream isn't very popular mm -hmm. here. Avocados have such a short shelf life here, they go rotten so fast. If you can find avocados, I think trying to find Mexican food in Korea is very difficult. Very now, challenging. One thing I want to say off the get-go here, there are definitely going to be people in the comment section that are like, oh, you're crazy. There's so much good Mexican food in Seoul. But here's the thing. You can find a good Mexican restaurant maybe in your neighborhood like Apgujang, Gangnam, or Itaewon. But majority of the time, Mexican restaurants don't really offer that good Mexican food. Remember that time we got pickles in our burrito? Remember that time we got 90% rice and then you're like, there's nothing Mexican about this. Remember when the refried beans weren't even fried beans? They were just beans that they put in there? Yep. Food group number two. Japanese food. We're talking about sashimi, sushi, and even ramen and maybe even curry. You would imagine that since Korea and Japan are so close to each other that Korea could get Japanese food right. And then a lot of times it doesn't. If you're gonna order sashimi in Korea, which is just raw sliced fish, you can go for Korean hue, which yes. is its own thing. But yes. if you're going to a Japanese restaurant, you're gonna find that your fish comes out frozen on a frozen marble slab as well. So it comes to you like icy and stuff. And at first we were like, well, maybe this place is just cheap or something, but that's kind of like what they do. I'm not sure how this started. Korea is close enough to get fresh fish. And does this happen in Japan as well? And if you go for rolls, they do serve you the Japanese style rolls, but mm -hmm. then they're covered in like mustard and mayonnaise. They put like, so much stuff on top of it, like thin onions and just like here's a roll and here's all the <laughs> toppings that are on it. I don't even know how to eat it. You're trying to take off the toppings and then you're, you're supposed to pick up the plate and just like scoop it into your mouth. That's the only way that you could get it in there. And there are a lot of places that pop up that say that they make Japanese style ramen. Mm. But from our experience, especially Simon, the connoisseur of ramen Japanese ramen. Ramen is probably my favorite food in the world. And I guess- Oh, ranch? I want ramen. I want it now. Hey, mister. We're not for my breakfast. We're not having ramen for breakfast. Feed me ramen. No. Ranch isn't a food. Ranch is an accessory to food. It's not its own food, but right. it should be. Please continue. And so many places in Korea that I went to for ramen. <laughs> Where's a beautiful, soft, goopy egg? Where's that fatty broth that's all pork bony that's been like stewing for like 72 years? That's got all the flavors right. I think that a lot of the Japanese ramen that we get, it tastes kind of more like a miso or like a one day bone soak. It has hasn't been soaked like the amount of no. time that it should be where you got the globlets of flat and everything it, like that. So. The globlets of flat. The globlets of flat fat. <laughs> So beware, Japanese food. Sometimes it's right, a lot of times it isn't. Food group number three, Italian food. Oh, Italian food. Mm. I feel like it is the most advertised in Korea when it comes to foreign food. There it's are like there's so a million. There's so many pasta restaurants everywhere. Everywhere. It's not that the pasta tastes bad, it's that it's very soupy almost. Yeah, the sauce is so thin. You pick up your noodles and then you got all of it pooling at the bottom there. Yeah, especially if you order a cream pasta. Mm. I've noticed a lot of the cream pastas are made with soy milk and you can't really thicken soy milk you can like a cream or right. a milk, which is kind of cool for vegans and vegetarians. But based. if I wanted vegan food, I get vegan food. <laughs> <laughs> which is another <laughs> difficult thing altogether in Korea, but it's there. And what's weird is that every time we get pasta, they always give us like a side dish of pickles. I'm like, sweet pickles. Always sweet pickles. It's, it's never like savory, vinegary pickles. It's mm -hmm. always sweet, sweet pickles. Yeah, same thing with pizza. If you order pizza in Korea, even mm. delivery, it will come with a container of pickles. And you're like, what do I do with these what, pickles? What's all these pickles? Yeah, let's say they provide you with garlic bread. Oh! And you're like, well, this is fantastic, isn't it? Well, and turns then you... out your garlic bread is a dessert garlic bread because it's covered in sugar and made really sweet. It's not bad tasting. It's no. just surprising. It's its own thing. But when you bite into it and it's sugary, I feel like a deep, deep sadness inside of the pit of my stomach. And also pizza, if you want to get it here. Koreanized pizza, for some reason, comes with a lot of corn. It's the default in there. Like, you never have to ask for tomato sauce with a pizza because it comes naturally 
naturally. Mm -hmm. Here, corn comes naturally with that tomato sauce. So you have to ask specifically, please don't put corn in there. No, I've heard that British people have corn in their pizza regularly. Really? Yes, remember we had our British friends and then we disowned them. No. A phrase you might want to learn. I don't want any corn. I don't want your corn. And a lot of times, even when we call them and we say, please, no corn, they're like, okay, okay. And they put in corn anyways. Yeah. Be very careful, guys. The pictures will show you something that has like mushroom, pepperoni, no corn. So you're like, oh, we're safe. Oh, There's yeah. no corn. <laughs> There's corn. You have to ask. There is corn. And it's vital. That crust that you think is stuffed with cheese, that's probably stuffed with sweet potato mousse. Sweet potato mousse. Beware. Not cheesy in the least bit. Food group number four. Indian food. Okay, so you might see on the menu, use curry and you think to yourself could be Indian curry what kind of curry is it I don't know I'm just gonna order and it's curry it is probably gonna be Korean curry which is yellow mm -hmm. and if it comes with vegetables if you're lucky it will just have potatoes carrots and maybe green beans in yeah. it and it's very sweet it's almost mm -hmm. made with like a honey or like a pureed apple and it's its own breed of curry it doesn't taste like the curry I'm used to whatsoever it's oh, not even spicy yeah there, there's no spice with it. it's sweet well in Japan they have a different kind of curry Japanese curry is brown and we love Japanese curry we eat it like three or four times times a week because the secret ingredient to Japanese curry is crack cocaine. Yes. It's all sprinkled in that shit. Oh like you God. can't get enough of it. If, if, it, curry, if you warm curry. up the crack, it becomes brown in there, but it is seriously addictive. But it is not Indian curry. It's not like, Indian curry. It is not palak paneer. It's not no. like mudra paneer. It's not like dal fry. Like I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. Yeah. It is its own flavor of glory. I would pick Japanese curry over Korean though. I'd pick Japanese curry a lot of times over Indian curry as well. I would pick Japanese curry over if a lot Indian of stuff. If Indian curry started putting crack cocaine in there's stuff as well that I'm sure the whole market would explode of gloriousness. You say, oh. Curry? Is it supposed to be addictive? Uh, give me that curry, son. <laughs> I saw Wolf of Wall Street and it was scary. It was so scary. So scary. Drugs are so bad. Are so bad. <laughs> Don't do drugs. It's so scary. So that's it for this week's TLDR. We're gonna talk some more about Costco food and desserts in our blog post. Make sure you click on the link here if you wanna read more about it. Surprise, it's tomato. Tomato everywhere! You will learn about that one. All right, my question for you guys, for people living in Korea, what food have you gone for that completely surprised you, either in a bad way or a good way? And for those of you living outside of Korea, do you have foreign food in your neighborhood? And is it accurate to you or do you have no idea? Because we grew up in Toronto, I'm not sure if the Indian food I had in Toronto is actually accurate in Indian food. Although we had Indian food in Singapore. Oh. That was awesome. And oh. I had similar Indian food in Toronto. Mm. Uh-oh. Simon's gotten Singapore. the Singapore thoughts. Bring me back, Singapore. We have to go back, Kate! We have, we have to, to go, go back. back! Two weeks ago for our TLDR about the broken system of Korea's internet, we had some awesome comments in there and also some questions. The number one question being from God Young Ho, who wants to know if there's no porn in Korea, he heard that Koreans watch a lot of porn, so how do they do it? And the answer, torrenting. Right, I read that stat that oh, yes. Korea has the number one download rate, isn't it? Well, I don't. I can't verify that stat. <laughs> Look up porn stats How much for porn us. do you download? Usually. <laughs> Okay, uh, so three to five times a week, yeah, you know, just yeah. normal. Mm. If anyone knows the stat we're talking about, look it up for us. But supposedly, supposedly a lot of porn downloading, not porn sites, just torrenting. I thought there was an interesting comment on YouTube from Forense who talked about their country, Germany. They mm. called it the Gemma or Gemma, G-E-M-A. And they said it is a nice company since it wants to protect copyrights, but they need evidence. Plus they ask for a fee. Their heart's in the right place, but then it kind of sucks for everybody else. So, so uh -huh. apparently Germany suffers a lot from having almost everything blocked constantly because people don't want to pay for the fees. So YouTube doesn't care about that, so they get blocked in Germany. Yeah. YG we can't do any blocked. live chats there. They can't even watch uploaded videos via Vivo. In Germany, I feel really bad. You've never actually seen any of our live mm -hmm. chats live. So if you want us to come to Germany, raise your hand and then we could do a live chat in person there. Germany, Sorry, Germany, how are you watching this right now? And on our website, Michelle and left a very interesting point about Korean web design. Mm. And she wanted to complain about how cluttered sites like Dam and Naval are so that when you look at it, there's so much text everywhere and there's yeah. no white space and no white balance which I really need some yep. more balance in web design. Even if you go to a news site, there's like ads on the news site oh, and they, they pop, like you're scrolling down and there's like a pop-up ad that keeps following you and you're like, I don't mm. want to be reading something and be like, hey, take a look at this ad. What's on this ad here? I'm on a news site. It's Isn't just, this, like, it's just a hot mess of design. But she wound up saying that her Korean relatives who are used to that, actually they don't like the North American web design, which mm. you have to do a lot of scrolling in order to get to other things instead of having everything ready at once. So I guess that's just a difference in how we are used to using the internet. Or her 
relatives are old farts who are in their 90s and are like, <laughs> I'm not saying anything about well, your family. I don't family. like changes. <laughs> just saying. No offense to your old fart family. Keep digging that hole, Martina. What? No one's gonna want to leave any more comments because it's just gonna insult their family. Old people aren't all old, old farts. There are some unold fart families. <sighs> Why? What's wrong? Sometimes my mom and dad say things and I'm like, mom and dad, you're just being an old fart. Like when my mom got mad for the exoskit where we licked our genitals. She's like, that's not cool. I'm like, mom, you're an old fart. Deal with it.